you know, we're all uh, treading on the reputations of those that came before us. And so um, the early Texas Rangers up until now, they've, they've um, you know, they've built up this reputation that, uh, you know, when, when, when we're involved, it's going to be done right. And, and I think people recognize that. And, and I think sometimes that I'm able to get things done quicker or more efficiently because people, um, they recognize that and they, they, they will talk to me or they will cooperate with me. And so I think that's a lot of times that, uh, that plays a huge role in, in how we're able to get things done. Growing up in East Texas, uh, the Highway Patrol was kind of the top of the line as far as law enforcement goes, or in my eyes anyway. And so I was, I was only, um, I only went to Harris County uh, Jail just to get some experience and uh, give me a little bit more time to get my college hours up to where I could become a trooper. And, uh, but with uh, my time there at the jail, that uh, combined with my college at the time, that allowed me to get into the Highway Patrol. And I wanted, I wanted to get into that criminal investigative uh, mindset, and so I went into the Criminal Investigations Division at the DPS there in Houston. And we investigate things like forgery, fraud, and cargo theft, and auto theft. And, um, and after doing that about four years, I had about 10 years on at the time, and so I was eligible to promote into the Rangers. And I wanted to investigate uh, more violent crimes like murders and, and uh, things like that. So that was that was what uh, my motivation was, was if, if I wanted to, to get into that and investigate those types of things, that's, uh, that's what made me want to become a ranger. Well, I knew a little bit about the, the history and, and I knew those guys, uh, they investigated things that I wanted to investigate. I knew that they were busy. Uh, I knew that they covered multiple counties. Um, but I didn't know really how busy they were, and uh, so I think that uh, I think that uh, time management became my new uh, <laughs> my new best friend there. So, but yeah, that uh, I don't think anybody can underestimate the, uh, the the time management skill that comes with with having to be a Texas Ranger. It, it's peaks and valleys. Um, so sometimes the the phone will ring and then it'll be a big case, and and you're going for days, and you may be staying in a hotel, and you're chasing down leads and. Uh, you know, looking for evidence in crime scenes, and then you know the downside of that is you have to write reports uh, to present to the prosecutor's office. And so, uh, when you're when you're not when you're not doing the fun stuff, you're 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 sitting it behind the desk typing reports, and uh, and it's probably about 70-30 typing versus the fun stuff. So uh, a lot more a lot more report writing than I originally thought I'd be doing. No, the fun stuff is, uh, man, you know, when the phone rings in the middle of the night, uh, you're going and you're getting in the moment and you're chasing those leads down and uh, you're going from witness to witness and, and one witness will give you a little bit more information and lead you to the next. That stuff right there can be uh, very exciting. Well, I've been a ranger um, for about six months in January of 2017 and, and uh, I got a phone call that there had been a, a woman reported missing over Milam County. We, we found the house that she had last been seen in and, and uh, I went in and, and I, I saw a few things that I, that I didn't really like or things that, that were pretty suspicious, but we just didn't have a whole lot. But I did learn at about the same time that two of the people she was last seen with both had outstanding warrants for other uh, cases and then they were in a neighboring county. And so we went over there and, and arrested those two for those outstanding warrants. One of them wouldn't talk at all. The other one spilled the beans, so to speak. She uh, she gave us everything and told us what had happened. And it happened in that house that I'd been in earlier. And so we we got a search warrant for that house and we went back the next day and and, um, and we started finding a lot of evidence that led us to believe that she was probably uh, deceased. And uh, and we, we ran on that for a couple of weeks until we just couldn't do it anymore. And then eventually my citizen came forward and said that he had seen one of our suspects on his property uh, a few days before, and um, and he led us to where he saw that suspect at, and sure enough, in the shallow grave is where we found her body. But but that uh, you know I kind of learned that early on in, in my police career. It's it's hard to do it by yourself. You have to have the the help of the the public and the community. And I think this is just one more example of how somebody coming forward and doing the right thing um, led us to her body, and, and and ultimately the arrest and conviction of her uh, murderers. So. Uh, I think that just reinforces that it's, it's, a, it's a team effort between police and, and the community. All the new rangers, when you're coming in, they, we have advanced crime scene school and, and uh, we focus on topics like uh, photography, fingerprint, DNA, uh, tire and footwear impressions, uh, blood stain pattern analysis, shooting incident reconstruction. So it's, it, it's pretty, 
it's pretty in depth, and so we have we have quite a bit of specialized training that we can offer other agencies that may not have the funding or the <clears throat> the personnel that they can send to do that. So the uh, the IEI uh, it was started back in 1915, or a group of detectives uh, they came together and they wanted to advance the you know forensics profession. And so uh, over the years and today, they're kind of a uh, certification board uh, that, that kind of keeps uh, regulation on standards uh, of education for forensics. And so uh, my education isn't really through the IEI. Uh, it started with DPS and then the Rangers and then it led into the National Forensics Academy in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, or Knoxville, Tennessee through the uh, University of Tennessee. Uh, which is a, another 10-week program that focuses specifically on forensics and crime scene management. And so after com completing that, uh, I challenged the IAI's test and then I received a certification as a, um, a uh, certified crime scene analyst there. So they have three basic certifications for crime scene uh, as well as other individual certifications like blood stain and tire and footwear impressions. But now I'm not quite an expert yet. I've got some more training I want to do in, in blood stain pattern analysis. Hopefully one day I will become a, an expert and I can testify in court as an expert. Uh, but at some point, you know, I've got to start looking at my retirement. And uh, to do that, I need to promote so I can uh, get the best retirement that I can. But that's about it. Yeah, I just enjoy what I do.